Confined spaces may be encountered in virtually any occupation or industry, with the ability to recognize them as the first step in preventing injuries, illnesses, or deaths. While confined space incidents are not the most common, they have been known to be the deadliest, considering the hazards associated with a confined space tend to be misunderstood and in most cases underestimated. Some of the most obvious risks associated with working in these spaces include oxygen deficiency and the availability of toxic gases resulting in hazardous situations such as fires or explosions. Some of the less considered hazards are often a result of other risks within the space, such as the potential of a fall, coming into contact with electrical hazards, heat stress, bacterial or biological concerns, incidents caused by limited visibility, and even psychological issues as a result of workers feeling claustrophobic in these spaces. There are naturally a few questions that arise when discussing confined spaces. Let's take a look at some of the most common. Number 1. What is a confined space? A confined space is defined as any enclosed or partially enclosed space not designed or intended for continuous human occupancy. The space may have restricted means of entry or exit, which may become hazardous to a worker entering it. Normally, all three of the below conditions need to be met for the area to be defined as a confined space. Large enough that an employee's body is able to enter it fully and perform assigned tasks, has limited access and egress opportunities, not designed for continuous worker occupancy. Number two, what is confined space training? Training is to be conducted before employees are first assigned duties relating to confined spaces or if there is a change in their assignments. OSHA requires employers to provide training for those who may be involved in any confined space operations. Training includes, but is not limited to, reviewing the OSHA standard and confined space permit program, self-rescue techniques, identification of physical hazards, testing and monitoring of oxygen content, flammability or toxicity hazards, use of fall protection, rescue, air monitoring, and ventilation equipment. Number three, how long is confined space training valid? OSHA regulations do not dictate how long training is valid. It is up to the employer to set training intervals. Generally speaking, after initial training is conducted, annual training refreshers are sufficient for employees that continually enter confined spaces. Additional training must be provided when there is a change in assigned duties. Whenever there is a change in permit space operations that present a hazard which employees were not previously trained on. Whenever the employer has reason to believe there are deviations from the permit entry procedures, or when the employer determines there are inadequacies in the employee's knowledge or use of procedures. For rescue personnel, they must conduct training and perform practice rescues at least every 12 months. The employer must also review the permit program annually, which may trigger follow-up training if changes are made. Number 4. How many types of confined spaces are there? Confined spaces can be found almost anywhere, from storage tanks and silos to manholes and sewers. Confined spaces affect employees in virtually every industry. Once an area has met the definition of a confined space, the next consideration is to determine the type of confined space the area is. There are three classifications. A permit required confined space has one or more of the following characteristics. A hazardous atmosphere, engulfment hazard, designed in a way that could trap or asphyxiate an entrant, contains any other recognized hazard. An alternate permit space is a space in which the only recognized hazard is atmospheric, and that hazard can be controlled through the use of continuous forced air ventilation. A non-permit space poses no actual hazardous atmosphere, and all other hazards within the space can be eliminated without entry into the space. Number 5. What is confined space entry? Entry is the action by which a person passes through an opening into a permit-required confined space. Entry includes any ensuing work activities in that space and is considered to have occurred as soon as any part of the entrance body breaks the plane of an opening into the space. Number 6. What is the difference between a confined space and a restricted space? 
Confined spaces are normally controlled spaces where a set of precautions are needed to be in place to allow for work to be performed. Along with an approved permit, the area would require constant atmospheric testing, air ventilation, the use of fall prevention equipment, as well as requiring the ability of emergency response rescue equipment in order to deal with any potential situation. Although hard to enter or exit, a restricted space is a work area that people don't generally enter, and that is the only hazard a worker is likely to encounter. Although some control measures may still be required for these areas, it is unlikely that these precautions will extend to the same level afforded to permitted confined spaces. And that wraps up our top six common questions regarding confined spaces. Do you have any additional questions? Ask us in the comments section below. And be sure to hit that like and subscribe button so you don't miss our next NASP Info video.